anybody ever thought that Jackie wasn't a rev head. <laughs> We've been on the road now for 22 months. So far we've travelled throughout Western Australia, Queensland, coastal South Australia, central New South Wales and several islands such as Kangaroo, Dirt, Heart, Og and Fraser. We've brought you many of our experiences through our photos and videos and quite often we are asked to show specific things. Big rocks, underwater snakes and stunning sunsets tend to be quite regularly asked for. But one thing many of you have asked us to show you is our setup, what we're travelling and living in this past 22 months. Now we've done many long touring trips across Australia already, generally using our rooftop tent for accommodation. Now the old rooftop tent works well for a week or two, but if you're stuck in the rain or even trying to get changed in a busy campground, the old rooftop starts to have hairs on it. This led us to looking into camper trailers. We needed something that could take off road, would be reliable and easy to get spares for. We looked at many brands, some cheap as buggery, others more expensive than our house. In the end we settled for an MDC Jackson Ford Fold, about midway. The MDC is a forward fold camper, meaning that the foldy bit pushes front ways and not backwards, which you can see in our setup here. A simple distinction really. This means the trailer is generally shorter than a rear fold and has good usable room that we can set up in about 10 minutes after pulling up. We also have an awning that doubles the living size of the trailer and gives us extra shading in the heat of the day. This takes about an extra 20 minutes to put up, so we don't do it every day. Inside our trailer we have a small lounge area bed, wardrobe and extra storage. Outside we have a slide out kitchen and a fair bit of storage including a 40 litre freezer. We have about 200 amp hours of onboard batteries which can keep our freezer going for two to five days without any charge depending on how hot it is outside. We also have solar inputs that depending on the sun can keep us going for weeks at a time. The MDC is a pretty good trailer, a bit heavy at times with a few quirks like having to get a wheel alignment about every 15,000 k's. But overall, it's been pretty good and handled what we've thrown at it well, with just a few hiccups along the way. It didn't cost us much, so you have to keep that in mind. So, all in all, it's filled the bill. When we started planning this trip, we were going to use our Jeep Wrangler. This car was a lot of fun for us, and we'd already seen many off-road sites in her. But, in working through our setup, we realised that the Jeep was just too small and lightweight for what we needed. So we had to make the difficult decision to trade her in on a new car. In the end, we bought ourselves a ute. 2019 Ford Ranger XLT. We made a few modifications to the Ford. Diesel pre-filter, 2 inch lift, bigger tyres, bull bar, 12 volt, canopy. These are a few of the things that we did to make it work for us. The 12 volt setup powers our fridge, which carries our beers and is tall enough for a bottle of wine. This is the most important part of any camp. We've set the car up to be totally silt sufficient, so we can camp away from the trailer if we want to get into some really harsh terrain. We can also self-recover with a winch, several snatch straps and traction boards, which have come in pretty handy when we've been bogged. After nearly two years and 800,000 k's, the Ford's still going strong and it's working very well for us. Now, there are a few extra tools that we have that we think we should really highlight. These make camping so much easier it's not funny, and we've used every one of these multiple times. Firstly, our driver. We use this to screw in our pegs. This is the best invention ever. Getting wheel nuts off the car and trailer and generally when we need something done up. Quite often on remote tracks, we come across trees that have fallen across the road. Or maybe we just want to cut up some firewood. We carry a reciprocating saw. It's not as quick or as powerful as a chainsaw, but it doesn't require any fluids and it's perfectly legal everywhere you go. A leaf blower has also required a bit of gear. From starting campfires to blowing dust out of the back of the car, the leaf blower is something we'll never travel without again. So hopefully that gives you a bit of an idea of our setup. So far it's taken us over 800,000 kilometres across one of the harshest continents on the planet, and hopefully it'll be taking us a lot further still.